What's up, everybody? This is Fred Ricciani of TSC. I have right here, via Skype, Mr. Theotis Crane. He is a star from The Walking Dead. He is a comedian. He is a martial artist. And he also stars in the new film, The Bagman, alongside John Cusack and Robert De Niro. Mr. Crane, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing all right, man. Thanks so much for joining us. I know I'm kind of interrupting your festivities because right now you're in New Orleans for Mardi Gras. How's that going? It's actually going really well. I'm getting ready to uh, march tonight. I'm at, I'm in uh, the Orpheus Parade, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Very cool. Now, I understand that you're also a part of a dance team. Yeah, uh, the 610 Stompers. Um and that's that's who I'm who are you know marching with, and basically it's an all guys dance group. Um, it's not really you'd have to check out either the website six ten stompers dot com or look at them on YouTube to really understand you know what it is they do. But um, it's it's a party for a cause. You know everything that we do benefits a charity, and uh, we have different charities throughout the year that we um that we give our proceeds to um the two events that we put on are the 610 stompers debutante ball and um the the ball crawl the 610 stompers ball crawl which is just literally a giant pub crawl and um like this year's debutante ball passed in february and we uh benefit the autism society of new orleans so very cool now for those that don't know you are six foot eight. You're a nice guy. You're a nice guy, but you're somebody that you know you'd like to stay on the good side of. <laughs> WrestleMania in a couple months is in your neck of the woods in New Orleans. Did you ever think about getting into pro wrestling or some kind of sport that used your height to your advantage? Um, well, honestly, the sport that uses my height to the advantage the most right now is uh, boxing and kickboxing. I got a pretty pretty good uh, reach advantage on most people, so that helps a lot. That, that, that does. Uh, maybe you could be John Jones' sparring partner. <laughs> uh, hopefully one day it'll be mine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, for those that don't know, you do Sanshu, which is made famous by former Strike Force champion, current UFC fighter, Kung Lee. Yep. What first came to you in martial arts? Was it jujitsu? Was it Senshao? Was it Muay Thai? How'd you discover martial arts? Um, the first thing I ever got into was um, judo. I got into judo when I was 13. And uh, then when I was 14, I learned how to box. And I competed for the first time at, I think, 19 in boxing. And then uh, I had a couple of judo tournaments. And but mostly it's been striking. It's mostly been boxing, and then I just started kickboxing about four years ago now. Have you had to do any stunt work that involves your martial arts skills? Actually, yeah. Um, especially for The Walking Dead, um, when I when I did my kill scene with, with uh, Nick Gomez, um, I did basically a prat fall, which is something that is the first thing you learn in judo is how to fall. And how to protect yourself when you're when you're hitting ground. So um, that and on the bag man, I get shot, and so I have to go down a very specific way, and that helped with that as well. Now you are best known right now as Big Tiny from The Walking Dead. You were one of the inmates along with Oscar and Tomas, Nick Gomez, and sure. Vincent M. Ward, and of course uh, Lou Temples as well as Axel. What was that whole experience like with The Walking Dead? Because I'm sure now for the rest of your life, at least to a lot of people, you're always going to be big tiny. Um, it's, I mean, it was great. Like it, it definitely was like a, a catapult, you know? Um, and you know, it can only get better. Like this is, you know, this is just the beginning of things. So, um, if this is where I'm starting, I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, how far it goes. And how did you get involved with the, the walking dead? Um, just, uh, this, they requested an audition we went through their process and, uh, you know, take the auditions in a way and got both. Very nice. Very nice. Now it seems like all those guys are kind of like a tight knit group and everything. I've spoken to a number of people that have been on the walking dead, your colleagues, Vincent M. Ward, Nick Gomez, E. Roger Mitchell. And they all, they all say that Andrew Lincoln makes everybody feel welcome. 
Yeah, and treat, treat oh, yeah. everybody the same. Absolutely. Um, it's basically one. It's a it's a group of of actors who enjoy acting with other actors. You know, yeah. and uh, we have the good fortune of you know having you know some really big talent come through, and 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 everybody's just so good and so humble, and um, you know, it makes it easy to work with everybody that comes on set. When you read the script, and you read it, and it said you were gonna die. How bummed out were you? <laughs> the funny thing about it, um, uh, Vincent and Nick had gotten to that part in the script before I did, and <laughs> and they had already come outside. I picked mine up a little bit later in them, and um, <laughs> they came to my trailer. I was like, "Oh man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What are you sorry for it? Oh, you haven't gotten to it yet." <laughs> No, man. <laughs> and so I sat out. I sat outside on the steps of my trailer uh, with them <laughs> sitting next to me, and uh, just <laughs> the war I read the war. Ah, oh, ah, oh, really? Oh god! <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> but yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was. It was. You know. It was. It, the thing is, like, it was almost like getting into a club. Cause it's like you see those guys anywhere, really, and you you immediately got some buddies in that city to hang out with. That is, that is cool. Now, do you think they should have kept some of the inmates around? I mean, come on, man. I mean, all, I mean, you guys are pretty resourceful. I mean, you survived for like eight, nine months in there, not knowing what was going on, doing your thing, and all of a sudden they just kill all of you off. I mean, I don't know about that. I mean, I think Rick could have used your skills. Uh, yeah. Uh, the the thing is, like, you know, half of it was. I do think it was a little fast, I, but a lot happened in that season. But um, it wouldn't I – mean, of course, I'm a little biased. You know, I'd love to stay on, but um, it, it's somebody, you know, one member of the prison left over would have been uh, a little bit more interesting, I think. But um, for everything they packed into it and didn't come into season four with a completely new set of circumstances, I think um, – they had the pace right, so you know I can't get too mad at that. Now, one movie and one actually movie franchise that's white hot right now is The Hunger Games, and I understand you actually starred in a parody of it called The Starving Games. Yeah, um, one of a few that I'm uh, finding out, but uh, <laughs> it was it was it was a lot of fun to work on. Um, I got to have purple hair and a purple beard <laughs> and uh, an adult diaper. So <laughs> that was uh, that was very interesting. It was a lot of it was it, once you get over it, it's very free. <laughs> like you know, you don't really have to worry about a whole lot because so much is taken care of for you. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it was it was a uh, it was you know it was a fun movie to watch. You know, if you're just goofing around with your friends or whatever. So has there ever been a a role either in a play, a, a show, a movie where? Somebody approached you, and at first you were really apprehensive of doing it. Yeah, there was one. Um, I was in uh, a production of Hair, and they were um, there was a song called. There was two songs that go together: it's Black Boys and White Boys. And Black Boys is sang by uh, for this production a trio of girls, and White Boys was to be sang by a trio uh, or as a trio of white girls. And so white girl, white boys is to be sang by a trio of black girls. And there were only two in the cast. And the director pulled me to the side. I was like, can you, I mean, it's already a musical. So he knows I can sing. It's like, can you sing a falsetto? Like, yeah. And, um, and I, I didn't know he was going for it. And the next thing you know, I'm, uh, um, in a dress singing, High falsetto um, <laughs> about white boys, and that that one took a little bit of getting used to. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only time it's been <laughs> that I've had to stop and really think about it. Hey, at least uh, at least you made it work, right? Now maybe that could parlay into a, a music career. Are you gonna have an album drop one day? No, I mean. I, I, I do music stuff for fun. That's pretty much it. Um, I'm actually looking to get a, a tuba because I used to play some years ago and get back into it. 
<laughs> you actually are starring in a film that just came out called The Bag Man, working alongside two heavyweights in acting, John Cusack, Robert De Niro. As a rising I wouldn't star say, I wouldn't say starring in this when those guys do all that all the starring, but I definitely had the pleasure to work with them. As a rising star in Hollywood, what is it like to work with these two guys? Um, it was crazy. Um, we shot it like a month after we shot The Walking Dead. So, you know, I didn't I didn't know how long it was going to take for this to come out. So it's it's been a couple years. But um, at the time, it was just a lot going on in, in, in my life. And so for that to just get dropped on me was, was pretty awesome. But um, it was, I mean, it's one of those things you just sit back and you watch and you learn from, you know, if they... You know, when you have the chance to sit and talk with them, you sit and talk with them and, and things of that nature. And, and everything I've learned from them has really helped up until this point. All right. We actually took some fan questions because, of course, we got a lot of Walking Dead fans, even some MMA fans that follow this channel at all. And this person asks, do you still follow the mixed martial arts scene? And what do you think about the state of the UFC if you do? Um, I'm just getting back into it. I've, I've actually been looking at a lot more boxing lately, but... Um, I was looking at, uh, I saw something on Reddit about the Korean zombie uh, losing to Aldo. And so I was checking that fight out. And, and I mean, as far as the state of things, I don't know the state of things in its entirety. Um, I know there's a lot going on with Silva being out, but I hear he's rehabbing, so that's pretty cool. But, um, you know, I don't know much about, like, the heavier divisions because last I looked, there wasn't a lot going on, but... Um, it, it seems like there's a lot, a lot of change coming. There's a lot of uh, change in the guards. Like, I mean, GSP left. Yeah. I did not know GSP left. Wow. What, uh, what organization did he go to? Oh, he, uh, he didn't go to the organization. He actually took a sabbatical. I mean, he's technically, I mean, he's technically retired. He, he said he had obsessive compulsive disorder. Like he fought pretty much. He fought Johnny Hendricks and, mm -hmm. uh, he was a, it was a close fight. He retired. Dana White wasn't too happy with the way he retired. And yeah, ever since then, he's kind of just like been doing a lot of media and saying that he wasn't happy with kind of like the drug situation in MMA and he just needed a break and he may come back. He may not come back. But the reason I asked you about the state of MMA, uh, as somebody else asked as well, is because it seems like they're at a crossroads. Like, I don't know how much you've seen of Ronda Rousey, but it seems like right now she might actually be their top star. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't think that's a, I don't, honestly, I think that's a good thing. It's not like, this isn't like a, a like a fad or or a, um, you know or a novelty. Like there are some really amazing female fighters that you know are, it's about time for them to get due. You know, it's like people have been focusing on certain things in in sports, especially combative sports, for such a, such a long time that you know women have been fighting for a while. There, I mean, there's been female boxers doing it for the longest, like female athletes in general, um, you know, it's about time for them to get some of their due. You know, people have been, it, even though you've got some amazing female basketball players, people still, the, the WNBA is a joke to some people. And, you know, I, I'm glad to see, you know, Ronda Rousey and a few other fighters. I hear they're doing uh, the ultimate fighter with the female fighters. And I think that's really cool. So um, as far as the state of things, um, I think that's a, a, a very positive aspect of it. Rookie mistakes to avoid as an actor. Um, let's see. Rookie mistakes to avoid. Thinking that there is a, a short and sweet way to to start out. Every I'm, almost everybody starts out pretty much the same. You know, you get. Um, either you start in theater and you're either in community theater. Or college theater or whatever, or you, um, you start out doing independent, um, no pay. Sometimes you're helping to pay for it, you know, um, productions like that. And you work your way up and you learn from people and you, um, and you take things as you go. And, and basically, um, once you get to a point when you're ready for an agent, um, don't ever pay any money up front. Agents are supposed to get paid after, because you got paid. Well said. Wise words from a wise man. Now, I understand, sir, you're actually appearing at a convention called PopCon on April 4th and 5th. 
at the National Guard Armory in Evansville, Indiana. Can you tell us a little bit about that and just your overall experience on the convention scene since I'm sure it's probably still a little new to you with the whole Walking Dead experience? Um, actually, I had a pretty action-packed year last year. I did a uh, upwards of 30 conventions, so I've, I've packed in a lot of experience <laughs> in a little time. But um, I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, Jeff Osborne seems like a really cool guy. I can't wait to meet him. Um, and he's a fight promoter um, and, and a former fighter, I understand. So we'll have a lot to talk about. Um, and so I'm excited about some of the guests he's gotten. Um, he actually has a female uh, MMA fighter coming, I believe. Um, and, and, you know, it'd be nice to sit around and, and talk with those guys. And... Uh, and especially his wrestling stuff, he has he has a, a lot of wrestling stories. I found those are some of the best stories ever. Uh, guys that used to wrestle or, or around that that time and uh, around that thing in the eighties and the nineties, um, I heard it got pretty ridiculous. So that's always really cool as well. As someone that knows Jeff, yeah, he's de he's definitely quite the character. Well, man, I really do appreciate the time. Before we let you go, where can fans find you online, and what other projects you got coming up? Um, I can be found at, uh, Twitter on Twitter at Theodos Crane. That's T-H-E-O-D-U-S-C-R-A-N-E. Um, Theodos Crane.com, um, Facebook.com slash official or well, pages slash official Theodos Crane. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, I guess that's it for now. And, um, you know, just look out, check out the bag, man. Um, and I'm in the process of uh, starting to make my own uh, films with some some friends of mine, and uh, that'll be coming hopefully early 2015. So, yeah, look out for that. Very cool, very cool. Thanks so much for the time, man.